Okay, so I was scrolling through Reddit when I came across this post of a 71 year old woman who at one point wrote an essay literally named How to Murder Your Husband, who was then charged for the shooting of her husband years prior. So I obviously took an interest in this case, so let's talk about it a bit. <laughs> Nancy Crampton Brophy was a self-proclaimed romance novelist who lived in Portland, Oregon with her late husband Daniel Brophy, who was only 63 when he passed. He was shot in the early hours at 7.30 in the morning with one gunshot wound in the back on June 2nd, 2018, right as he arrived to his job teaching at the Oregon Culinary Institute. He was found shortly after by his students who were quick to call 911 and officials say he died at the scene. Details of what led police to suspect Nancy Brophy and her husband's murder were not available. Coin 6 News in Portland reported at the time that a judge ordered the probable cause affidavit in the case to remain sealed while the investigation is ongoing. She then made this post on Facebook. For my Facebook friends and family, I have sad news to relay. My husband and best friend, Chef Dan Brophy, was killed yesterday morning. For those of you who are close to me and feel this deserved a phone call, you are right, but I'm struggling to make sense of everything right now. There is a candlelight vigil at the Oregon Culinary Institute tomorrow, Monday, June 4th at 7pm. While I appreciate all of your loving responses, I am overwhelmed. Please save phone calls for a few days until I can function. Neighbors of Daniel told the or Organian, Origian, I don't know how to say that, that Nancy Brophy had what they considered to be an odd reaction to her husband's death. Don McConnell, a neighbor for six years, told the newspaper she never showed any signs of being upset or sad. I would say she had an air of relief, like it was almost a godsend. McConnell also spoke to Coin6 News and told them that once he got the nerve to ask Nancy about the investigation. He asked Nancy if investigators were keeping in touch with her, to which she replied, no, I'm out of the loop. And he said, well, what do you mean? And she said, they consider me a suspect. Friends and family expressed disbelief that Nancy Rofi could be responsible for her husband's death. According to KGW8 in Portland, the couple had been married for 26 years. Friend Tanya Medlin told the news station, I've known her for 30 years. I can't imagine. I just don't think she's capable. Heather Kennett, who is Nancy Rofi's niece, wrote in a Facebook page established to the memory of her uncle that her aunt cannot have admitted this crime. I am terribly saddened and angered by her arrest and false accusations of having murdered Dan for many reasons, not the least of which being the thought that they had stopped looking for the persons or person who did the murder of Dan. Nancy did not commit this horrendous crime. Dan was the love of her life. They had a happy marriage with a lot of laughter, a lot of great food, and a lot of brophyisms, and there is nothing Nancy would value more than their life together that would cause her to have taken his life and left her own with this giant gaping hole. Students of Daniel's also said that they would have never suspected his wife to be the murderer, as they assumed it was probably an older student with some sort of vendetta against him. Oregon Culinary Institute described the faculty member's violent death as a senseless act. In a post on the school's Facebook page, they wrote, Dan Brophy was an outstanding and caring culinary professional and educator. The thousands of students who were fortunate enough to call him their instructor loved and respected him for giving them his utmost best. Our community is in shock and we are grieving with the loss of an amazing human being, friend, and chef. On her website, Nancy Brophy said her husband's mantra was, Life is a science project. She credited him with the chickens and turkeys in their backyard, a vegetable garden, and a hot meal every night. Back on the topic of her stories, she described them as pretty men and strong women about families that don't always work and about the joy of finding love and the difficulties of making it stay. Yes, that's literally the quote. One of the novels in the series is called The Wrong Husband, part of the Wrong Never Felt So Right series. The book's plot involves the abused wife of a senator who fakes her death on a cruise and is then hunted by a private paramilitary organization hired to find her body so her husband can collect the insurance money. Also on her website, in her about section, the first line is quite literally, writers are liars. I don't remember who said that, but it's not true. Which is interesting to me, because the suspected motive behind killing her husband was his $1.4 million insurance policy. No other suspects have ever been mentioned in this case, and Chaffer cameras show Nancy's minivan driving near the institution around the time of the murder. Now, I know everyone wants the link to the how to murder your husband essay, but sadly and quite obviously, it's been removed from her website. And on the most shocking twist of this video, the essay actually cannot be used as evidence in trial as it was written as a writer's prompt 11 years ago. She was arrested and charged with the murder three months after his death, but due to COVID, the trial has been taking a bit to come up. She is currently still in custody and her next court trial is set for September 17th.
Yeah, so I just think this is a pretty interesting case, I guess. I think it's just, it, it's like, she literally, I just, I don't know. It's, I think she had this fantasy. Like, she was a romance novelist who wrote romance. And I think her life up to her maybe was boring. I mean, there was, I can't find much about her yet because this case is still, like, you know, ongoing or whatnot. Um, still pretty new. I don't know. I think she just wanted to literally live the life of one of her romance novels. I think she probably read them when she was younger, which inspired her to start writing them. And I think she really just wanted to live out that fantasy. Like, I don't think divorcing her husband was ever option her i think she wanted it she wanted the drama like she wanted that there was a 1.4 million insurance policy but the her lawyer actually said in the most recent court case that she actually did not get any money after his death because probably well i don't actually know why probably to do with something of the suspect killing and you know all that good stuff but uh yeah it's the case of this trial and i'm probably gonna do a lot more uh true crime related stuff because it's just one of my favorite things personally to just delve into and there's so so many strange cases out there there. and i know true crime is associated with like murder and that stuff but even like conspiracies and corruptions of like companies and like fraud there's so much to talk about so definitely expect more of these videos if uh this does well and uh yeah thanks everybody for watching